Thank you very much, Mr. Jalo. Uh, thank you also for having me on this uh, program. Uh, yes, I am Usman Sela, as you've said, uh, stated. Uh, I am the National Assembly member for Banjul North and also uh, the chairperson of the National Assembly Select Committee on Health, Women, Children, Disaster, Humanitarian Relief, and Refugees. I'm also a member of other committees like the Committee on Trade, the Standing Committee on Foreign Relations. Uh, but basically, uh, my preoccupation, preoccupation, preoccupation mainly is uh, on, on, on health, considering the, uh, on that committee which I'm chairing, mm -hmm. considering the eno eno enormity of, 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 of the work, the responsibility. So uh, I am more pronounced in that committee than in other committees. Yeah, that's brilliant of yours, and definitely it is a great responsibility put before you, and I hope that definitely you will execute it as expected, because it's trust and confidence put before you. But as a member of the National Assembly, when it comes to health, um, do you think enough is done when it comes to health in the Gambia? Well, first of all, let me just say that uh, as, a, as the chair of the committee, it's not me alone who pushes things. Mm -hmm. I do it in conjunction with my colleagues, the other honorable members who are members of the committee, 11 others. Yeah. And uh, I can say uh, they are really also on board, very proactive. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the active committees at the National Assembly. So, uh, if there is kudos is on the other members. Uh, so as far as uh, your question is concerned, talking about health, whether enough is done to address the health issues in the Gambia? Well, efforts are being made, but uh, the challenges are not addressed uh, exhaustively. Uh, as you know, uh, up to now, some women uh, dying while uh, giving birth uh, to, to lives. Sometimes both the mother and the child dies. Of course, it's, 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 it's decreasing, the number is decreasing, but the fact that we're still having that as a challenge, yeah. uh, because uh, I have the conviction, and that is what happens in the, the, the countries where you know, uh, the health systems are really in place. Yeah. Uh, they are fit for purpose, where no man dies while delivering. Delivering, definitely. So, uh, so that's a challenge with our health system. Like I said, the numbers are reducing, though, but uh, it's still there. Yeah. Uh, some people also have challenge to having access uh, to healthcare facilities. Uh, there are healthcare facilities around the country, but sometimes they are far away from those that are in need of it. Yeah. And then when they also go to those facilities, the, the type of care that they need, the quality care, is sometimes absent due to the lack of uh, having the, the, the necessary uh, professionals, that is trained nurses, doctors, there. You don't have some of them there, uh, but uh, that's also a challenge, also in terms of uh, drugs, availability of drugs. These are all challenges. Sometimes you go, they give you prescription, but you cannot find the, the, the medicines in the facilities, so you have to go to the pharmacies to, to purchase them. So these are all challenges uh, that are confronting the sector. Mm -hmm. But as I indicated earlier, that uh, efforts are being done, they're being made at the level of the Minister of Health, at the level of the health professionals, because I think we also need to do our heart yeah, definitely. to those that are uh, working at the health facilities, that uh, despite the challenges that they encounter in terms of uh, having the necessary equipment, uh, the, the training, the motivation, they're still persevering in trying to ensure that the population uh, has, uh, has access to, to, to health care. But um, uh, the challenges are that, uh, and this is what we ought to address, that Gambia needs a health care infrastructure. That is, we have hospitals, we have health care centers, either major or both major and minor, we also have dispensaries or health posts that are fit for purpose. That all these facilities, in any of these facilities that uh, a person goes, there should be a trained personnel, either a doctor or a trained nurse there. You should have access to the most, the most basic services that hospitals or medical facilities offer or should offer. Uh, you have someone who would listen to you, you know, diagnose you, make the appropriate diagnosis, or not, not wrong diagnosis, appropriate diagnosis, yeah. and then uh, give you the, the appropriate prescription. Mm. 
you have access to the appropriate drugs, or even if it's drugs that, 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 that they're, they're giving you, or sometimes you know, they just ask you to be doing certain things. Sometimes they, they, your, your, your condition does not require medication or such uh, drugs, so they can advise you to be doing this, doing that, like those that happen. Yeah, um, that's clearly very obvious, and I am happy that you admit in the fact. This is straight from the Gambia. Mm -hmm. um, it is not about um, speaking on issues that does not exist or trying to sideways issues. It is about saying the truth. Mm -hmm. And I, I must confess to you that mm -hmm. you speaking on fact. This is what is on the ground, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We have seen it. It's evidential that it happens on the ground. But um, so long as we recognize there are problems and there are factors that lead to how the Gambia is when it comes to the health sector, what are some of the measures that definitely your committees, particularly as member of the, the um, National Assembly, the lawmaking organ, that is very powerful when it comes to the allocation of budgets, you know, to, to, to different ministerial positions. Are uh, your committee or the National Assembly also doing effort? Because you have a role to play. And you play one of the most important roles and when it comes to finance. From the Minister of Finance, the budget has been presented before the National Assembly. And it is now at the discussion of the National Assembly to determine which portion should go to this office and which portion should go to this office. But um, is health a priority? Certainly, it's a priority at the, at the level of the National Assembly. I can tell you that every National Assembly member is concerned about health because they are representing constituencies, and then these are challenges on the ground. So obviously, it has to be something that is of concern to them. And then when you come to, you come to the floor of the Assembly, they do give support to issues relating to, to health. As for the committee, as I told you, we have a very proactive committee members. Uh, we have very proactive committee members. Mm -hmm. uh, the, real, the majority are really up to task. And then uh, what we do is that uh, when we came in first in 2017 as a National Assembly and also as a select committee, that was the time that the committee was established. It, was of it has been in place, but that was the time that we inaugurate and then have new members uh, of 12. Uh, uh, you have 12 we we found the budget. The first budget that we dealt with was about $700 million in plus. Mm -hmm. But we have been struggling. We struggled. We increased it. We struggled to increase it to $900 million to increase it to 1.1, and this last one was $1.5 billion. And that was the committee when we came, seven, from seven, imagine 700 million plus, up to 1.5 billion. And the ministry, you know, the initially, in fact, the last one, what we did, with the current budget that we have in place, yes. you know, it was processed, it was discussed and approved in uh, late last year, that was December. Yeah. But what we had as a committee, we invited the ministry to come and present to us what they want to pass, what they have given to government, and to, to defend it, and they were able to able to defend it. And yeah. then uh, the, 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 the Minister of Finance intended to give them less. But with our intervention, we agreed, the, we agreed with their case. It's our case, not only that of the Ministry, but the case of the Gambia, the case of the National Assembly, the case of the committee, because health concerns all of us. Definitely. Even if you don't, have, you don't need the services at the level of the, 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 the Gambia here, uh, your, your constituents, mm -hmm. they need it, and you are there to represent them. So this is what the committee had done. The committee had been, you know, it's a household name at the National Assembly now, the Health Committee, the Committee on Health. Because for us, we have really been pursuing and pushing for issues dealing with health. And then we have been getting the support of all the National Assembly members. So this I can really confess. Yeah, I, I, am, I am seeing the determination from the National Assembly. But it is equally important to have the political will. And that political will, perhaps, the government is being divided into three organs. And the executive also have a greater role because the Minister of Finance is directly under the executive. So I think they must have the political will in trying to execute what is um, in their mandate. And their mandate is to make sure the life and properties of the government people is being secured, but collectively with everyone. And setting away from that health, um, we know there are challenges and you have spelled it out clearly, and there are efforts that you people are doing. But um, National Assembly as a whole, um, do you think the status quo of the National Assembly at the moment is correct? Like um, the power allocated for you, are they up to expectations? what people expect from you, or you need more powers that should be given to you as the way the draft has given you more powers, looking at the, 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 cons the recent constitution, which is the 1997 constitution. Let me tell you that uh, the National Assembly is the most powerful institution in this land, on, on this land, in this country. It is the apex institution as far as governance is concerned. Everything is below in terms of the arms of the state. You have three arms of the state, and the apex is the National Assembly. The executive is there, they are the ones that execute. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are interested in resources mm -hmm. to implement. Mm -hmm. 
They are the ones that should come up with policies, promulgate policies. Mm -hmm. But you have the executive there that performs oversight, that approves mm -hmm. of the implementation, mm -hmm. either the resources, allocation of resources, mm -hmm. and after allocating the resources, we are the ones who come and determine and ensure that there's accountability. Mm -hmm. Not only accountability, but in the process, before even accountability, transparency. You know, to, we, it's the assembly that does that to our oversight. Like I said, yeah. least, we have cited the committee, exactly. the seller committees. We have cellular committees there, we have standing committees, we have special cellular committees, we have any other committee that can be, can be established by the National Assembly to address yes, any um, particular issue. But, Miss, um, I will definitely disagree with you when it comes to that position of the National Assembly is the most superior part of the, all the organs of the state. Um, recently, looking at um, the, the, the way the 1997 constitution is being structured, um, you realize that the executive president is far more powerful than the National Assembly. Honestly speaking, when it comes to democratic dispensation, the parliament is supreme and the parliament is more powerful. But as per the 1997 constitution, the executive president is more powerful. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? <laughs> well, I, I advise you to go and revisit it. Uh, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm reaffirming mm -hmm. that uh, the National Assembly is the most powerful institution because it's the institution. That is, that is what it ought to be. But recently, as per our laws, that's not the position. No, but we have been rejecting. The issues have been... No, you, you have the power to reject at the level of the and National Assembly. And we reject, nothing happens after that. Yes, but the President also have the power, in most of the circumstances, to also execute executive orders. No. And even the, even the head of the National Assembly at the moment is, you know, chosen by the President, which is the Speaker. Well, but the Speaker is just there to preside over the proceedings. Let yes. me tell you. The yes. Speaker is not... It's the National Assembly. He doesn't member. have in voting right. Even, no, he doesn't even have a voting right. Yes, I do. Yeah, for sure. She's just there to ensure that the standing mm. orders are observed. They go according to the, process, the processes yes. of the National Assembly goes in accordance with the, the, the standing orders of the National Assembly and also the constitution of the Gambia. Yes. And that's all. If the decisions are made by the National Assembly members, mm. the elected members, and of course, the other executive, the, the other nominated members also do vote. Yeah, but I'm telling you that this National Assembly that approves. Look at the appointments of the Ombudsman. Yeah, the, yeah I know. So um, those are instances. I'm telling you, those are the instances. And when it comes to budget also, we can reject. But once we reject something, it cannot come back. Yes. So we have the powers. Have this the National Assembly that has the powers. It, it, and of course, this National Assembly, you know, the National Assembly can, can, can remove the President from office. Yeah, Although he, in the Assembly also, the, last, the, the former dispensation mm -hmm. also was able to manage and then put in the Constitution uh, the powers of the president. The president, the president can also dissolve parliament. Yeah. You know, that's not dem that's not that's not democracy. That's not democ democ democracy. Yes. That's not a democratic practice. But that's the reality here. And and that and that is why when when you people were elected, the first move you did is to remove that provision of the constitution saying if you cross carpet from your political party, you can be removed. That was the first thing to unify exactly. yourself. Exactly. That's that is showing you the independence of the national assembly. So you're trying to independ yourself. So that, what that means was that not only the members of the early ruling party that comes into being, mm -hmm. but even members of the opposition, like you have seen what yeah, has happened with exactly. some, yeah, yeah. that uh, they were using that to make sure that they kowtow, to, they, you control them. Yeah. You ensure that they kowtow before you, they kowtow after you, mm -hmm. and then to, 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 to neutralize their independence. Yeah. That uh, we are so the ones who are there. Able to do their if you don't support us, if you don't do our bit, yeah. we are going to, to expel you from our party. And once you are, that is done, you're going to lose your seat automatically. And that is section 81, uh, 91.1D. Uh, in fact, I was the first one who, 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 who raised right. that issue at the assembly. So you were so, you are very you are part of the people that we are very concerned on how you're going to immune yourself. Not to immune ourselves. Well, for me, I'm from a party that uh, we are we are free as far as there is concerned. Uh, we don't have that threat. Okay. Yes, there's no one who's going to be. <laughs> and and just party. recently again. So, but it was and you are making things. You don't make it for yourself. You make it for posterity. Yeah. And that law we had in mind that it has to be that has to be established. National Assembly members ought to be independent. They should not, you know, be playing the, the card of anybody other than the interests of the people, the population, the electorate that voted for you. This is for, these are the ones that you should be serving. Yes. So do their bit, not anybody else's. Not your party. Of course, your party would come. You have party policies. You ought to support your party policies, your party programs yeah. at the assembly. Huh? But of course, they have to be in line, in line with the, the interests of this. Yeah, so, so basically that's that. So, um, go ahead. That's um, quietly also great of yours, um, of trying to identify yourself, because that is what is going to help you to do your work as expected. But away from that, we also see certain development that has happened from the National Assembly. Now, when you are also integrated as member of the National Assembly, few weeks later, you were given vehicles. Um, three years down the line, you were also, you know, 
issues regarding land comes about. And it was made openly that you were part of the people that rejected this land. What was your reason for rejecting both the vehicle and the land? Well, it's my political conviction, the principles that I have and that of my party. These are both things, uh, both considerations that myself as an individual and also the party. But your, yourself, what, 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 what do you, what, what is that have to do with yourself? Well, for me, uh, you know, it's representation. I'm elected to serve the population. That's uh, the motivation. I came into politics to make a difference in the lives of people. And how do I make this difference? I want to be a trustee. I want them to entrust me with their powers. To entrust me that through their voice, through their vote. To, to entrust me their powers as individual powers so that I'll go and be their eye, their ear, and their mouth. But Honorable, that is not enough because um, so long as you are elected and you want you to be their trust as their mouth and their ear. Mm -hmm. But taking a land has nothing to do with that. No, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. You're asking me. You said yes. this is it. I'm telling you the principles. Yeah. That uh, when I was uh, campaigning, asking for their support, mm -hmm. I have been telling them that I am not looking for a job. I'm not looking for privilege. I'm not looking for status. Mm -hmm. I am coming to be your servant. I want to be your servant. I want to serve you selflessly. By the way, selfless service, of course, I'm receiving salaries. Mm -hmm. We have, do have sittings. I receive allowances. But these are legitimate. These are justifiable. These are entitlements. But other than this, anything that comes from me, I believe that no, it's not something that uh, I should really be, be going after. Like vehicles. Of course, if it were the National Assembly that had provided the National Assembly members with official vehicles, not ours, I won't be, but official vehicles, and then it comes through us and we approve it as a National Assembly. But even in that, in that, we would have discussed whether that's a priority, whether the National Assembly at this stage and the state of the country uh, permits National Assembly was to be given vehicles. Are there other priorities? I mean, this could have been. I know, I know. Those should, should have been your thoughts. Yes, of course, it could have been I, argued. I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. I don't know whether we are going to end up, whether we're going to accept it or. But this is an issue that I would have been pushing. Yes, pushing. Is this a priority for us to be given vehicles? Yeah. Is this money but not needed elsewhere, like in the case of health? Is it not necessary to plow into the health sector? But this does not mean that uh, they do not need mobility, because if you see some of them are far away, you, know, you can understand. But is there any other way that you can give them, maybe you can provide mobility for them yeah. that would not, you know, uh, be detrimental to anything in terms of, you know, whether the resources uh, were, could have been plowed elsewhere. So this is just my, my position. I'm and not saying what, that What do you mobility. say to the suggestion that um, there are people that are saying um, you did not take the land because perhaps you're living in a very comfortable life in the compost here. But those in the provinces, perhaps you're from Basse, those from Basse, or from CRR who are in Kombosi are renting, um, they are greedily needing the land because they needed it for survival. But you're spoiling it, you're saying greedily. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the suggestion of people. Anyway, let me just say, let me just put it this way I don't oppose National Assembly members being allocated land. I've not been crying, <laughs> I've not been crying over it, I've not been, been condemning it. I don't oppose government allocating land. That's not my position. So do you think it's legal? No, for me, well, government has authority to, 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 to allocate land. So there is no legality, question of legality. And then here, the practice also with land is that uh, sometimes it's the communities. If you have any, any given settlement, the land, the, the outlying land, some normally is owned by the community. Yeah. That has been the practice. Yeah. But government also has uh, this law in place that uh, they can appropriate land. And they yeah. make it state land, so and that's law. So that's not a question for me. I don't, I don't, I don't entertain no, but, um, a discussion around that area, legality or legality, ownership or non ownership. That's not an area for me to go. What I'm saying is, National Assembly members, as you said, they have a right like anybody else to be allocated yeah. land. They have a right to have let, land. Let, let me make it clear that um, for the position of the law is that land under the Combo Shed Mary is owned by the state. Apart from the Combo Shed Mary, which is the provinces is owned by the community. So one of the things, when I heard of that you did not take the land, I was thinking of you looking at, at that angle, that it is owned by the community, and if the community requests for it, we have no choice than to give it to them. But unfortunately, perhaps you're not looking at that angle, but um, I think those places are part of the community, and the community owns the land. No, that was, a, that was not my argument. That, that's, that's not an area. For that me, was not your reasoning. Well, don't, box me, for that. Don't, don't box me into that, <laughs> that, 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 that place. Uh, for me, my position is very clear. I'm telling you, 
that I am not opposed to land being allocated. I'm not opposed to people applying for land. I'm not opposed to go state allocating land. My position here is, this is two, like I told you, two considerations. One is personal conviction, principles, and the other, that of my party. That for me, we are out to serve. Mm. I'm not saying that people don't deserve it. No. So under your party, uh, under your party, they did not accept anything that is legal. I think your party cannot. No, it's not legal. It. No, not <laughs> no, your party. If your party have principles, mm -hmm. and those principles are in conformity with the laws of the Gambia, mm. and you just allege that the president can do it, or the, the government can allocate land for national assembly. Mm. So if they can do so, and your party, what is the position of your party? Are they not going to? That's accept what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that for me, it's personal. I am coming to serve. I, I said yes, I want to serve selflessly. I agree with that part. Apart from my salary, I told you this very clearly. Yes. Apart from my salary, then the, the concomitant allowances that go that go, that, yeah. that go with that, yes. uh, the, those that are legitimate, mm. that are that are entitlements, mm. anything else, mm. definitely I, I just don't need it. That's mm. what I'm saying. This is very clear. That, that's on your personal view. And also that of the party. We are out to serve. For us, we are coming to serve. This does not mean I'm not condemning anyone. No one is wrong. No one is right no. here. That's not the issue. Um, um, first, in this correction, because it was not clear, but it is, uh, it, you know, making it clear that most of your conviction as party members and even individual are member of your parties is that you come into South. That's, that's the concern. That's, that's exactly. the same. For the party, if you are DOI, I, I am part of DOI because of the principles of the party, the yeah. programs of the party. I support them. Because and for me, we want to uplift the Gambians. We want to transform this country, make every Gambian. You know, realize prosperity, uh, live in dignity, live in liberty. These are the these are the catch words. These are the, the white words, so call it whatever you call the dictum, whatever. This is what we believe in. Yeah. That we are coming to empower the population. We believe that this country can be better than this, what it is. So and then it just requires, you know, leaders who are ready to serve and then population that is enlightened. And that's our challenge. Gambia we have challenge with leadership. Uh, and mm -hmm. then challenge with the population that is enlightened. For sure. You know, people sure. who don't know their rights, who don't know that they are sovereign, they own the country. Um, they, are, they, they, are, they have rights and rights, you appropriate your rights. You don't allow people to get rights and not gifts. They are, they are, you, you demand for them. And then um, those are some of the factors. That is why Sahel Network Team <laughs> come with such an initiative mm -hmm. to make sure that people have been enlightened, to make sure that the doubt is being dusted out. Mm -hmm so that the truth will prevail, mm -hmm. uh, which is very true, and that is why you're invited and you're doing justice to the topic. I must confess to you again. Mm -hmm. But um, just recently, again, um, the National Assembly to this debate, and at the end, it, came, it becomes nothing, mm -hmm. because what the government was looking for, they did not find it, they have to take an executive order. What do you have to say about that? What is that? Two days of debate of extension of the state of emergency, mm -hmm. and at the end, it was not the national assembly was able, was able to take a decision that the government won. What do you think was the, the, the reasoning of the national assembly members? Are they were they serving the interests of the people, or they were serving their individual interests? Bearing in mind COVID-19 as part of the health committee, you know COVID-19 is not waiting for anyone.